We should talk to that hustler running the black market. Maybe she can help us out restocking the bar. Look at fucking Pat over here. He's like, oh, <laughs> oh I'm so sick. Oh, he just wants some fucking iron on that lazy piece of shit. And whatever, talking to the hot doctor and shit like that. Hey everyone, welcome back to XCOM. Like last time I said I was doing gorilla apps. Ops, not apps. Uh, and then, yeah, that's pretty much what we're doing here. So, something interesting I learned. Um, so you know how I was complaining the entire- well, I wasn't complaining, but I was, I was noticing how uh, Ken had like the senpai voice on the entire time. Like, I guess that'll be okay. Uh, so that's apparently, uh, not the loadout. Um, that's what Attitude does. So I thought it just changed their posture, but apparently it changes their voice lines too. So I I didn't really change it for anybody else except for Jack Whistle. So apparently he's realized that he's the expendable one on the team, so he's very upset about it. But uh, whatever. <laughs> so we got the Skulljack now. Uh, so that's a weapon of... I don't know really what it does. It says it requires melee range to activate, but I don't really know how it works though. So I figured I'd give it to Jack because he's supposed to be melee range. We'll see how that works. And I think everybody else is fine here. Uh, still gonna train up uh, Kyle over here. And yeah, let's get started. Sky Ranger deploy. Menace, ready to deploy. Dr. Tygen has picked up a signal from a hidden alien communications relay sending data to the Advent Network from this area. Anything we can do to disrupt the aliens' logistics increases our chances of stopping their progress. We'll need to secure the area and eliminate any hostiles, then destroy the relay before they finish their transmission. Hey look, we're going to Vancouver. Yeah, that's like my ex-home turf. That is definitely Vancouver, right? Literally a shithole. Go. Metis 1-5, the communications relay is up ahead. Move in and destroy the target. Alright, how many turns do we have? We have eight turns. So, we're gonna have to make some big fucking plays. Alright, so, uh, I'm gonna actually do something a little bit different this mission. I'm gonna explain a lot more about my choices and stuff like that because I feel that I haven't been doing that enough actually. Uh, because I've had a couple of people complaining about my use of low cover. The Advent Captain would serve our purposes nicely, if it can be disabled. Alright, where's the sniper? So obviously the sniper, every single time, I, I like to get him to high ground. Um, so, so like, okay, so there's some complaints in the comments, uh, about how my use of, of low cover was not approved. Uh, by some people and things like that, and like, they, they were wondering why I was doing it and they thought I was just like throwing soldiers' lives away and things like that. Well, I haven't lost anybody yet, but, um, you know, it's, it's a valid complaint. Uh, so if we deal with these guys, who's the, who's the soldier? Uh, I don't know which one that is, the admin officer. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain a couple of my choices here. So. Jack is not revealed in concealment, and I think I've just learned today, or just now, that apparently this does not count as... Because he's actually not in cover relative to where these soldiers are, which is interesting to me. Uh, so, yeah. So, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be moving people as close as humanly possible. Um, I'm trying to give a couple spaces for, for leeway, but the idea is even though I'm bringing them into low cover right now, um, it's, it's, it's really, it's not just about what, what they can, what we can do to them in my turn. It's all, also about what they can do to me when it's their turn. So, w when it's their turn, they're not really going to be able to do much because they're going to just spot me and then they're going to essentially just run around and then I'll just deal with it as I get there. At this point, Jack is kind of over there. Okay, they're, they're approaching a little bit over here. So this is probably the, not the scenario I wanted. Uh, however, it actually, it, it depends if we're spotted right now. We are not spotted, but if Ken moves at all, he will be spotted. So, it, this actually didn't turn out to be as bad as I thought it would turn out. But, unfortunately, Ken can't move right now. Um, however, there's three of them in a, in a bundle here. So, it actually might be a good opportunity for me to just... Uh, open up with a gas grenade, I would think. Because the thing is, I actually want to skulljack one of these motherfuckers. Actually, let's see how this works before I start. 
Uh, Skulljack. I have one charge. Oh, that's how that works. Hit an adjacent enemy with your Skulljack. Alright, so here, here's the plan then. Uh, he has noticeably more health. So, um, the thing, the way I treat this game is I treat the, uh, grenaders as my guaranteed damage, which most of the time they are. Uh, so, which means I can b basically play more dangerously knowing that I have, like, another grenader out, which is Big Dong Adam 265. So, most of the time when you see me making maybe questionable mo moves or something, something like that, just know it's because I know I have a grenader, I can blow up cover, I have a whole bunch of options. They basically create options for me. I'm gonna do incendiary grenade. How much damage? Four to five. Yeah, let's, let's do this. So, I'm opening with this instead of doing an overwatch ambush because I don't want this guy to die right away. I want him to run somewhere so Adam can go and, uh, so not Adam, but Jack Witchell can go and fucking skull Jack his ass. That's the whole reason I've done this. Alright, so now that this has happened, we go to Adam next, and Adam will... That's the officer. Alright, what, what position is he taking? So, it's not the best cover, but I don't think I have much of a choice. I just really want to use the skull Jack now. See what the fuck this is. The fuck did he just do? What the fuck is this? We have complete access to the Advent Psionic Network. I have dedicated our systems to processing the new data, but we will need to work fast. It is only a matter of time before they detect our intrusion. Oh, this is a hack. Oh, I guess Zan would have been better with this. Okay, but I give him the med packs though. Whatever. That's something interesting to note, though. Yeah, there's just no chance I was getting any of this. Did, did I just stab him with that? Oh shit, there's a muton there. Alright. Now, this is what I was afraid of. Is, is something behind there. But I really want to use the skull jack. Alright, so, um, our priority- what the fuck is going on here? appears to be the codex responsible for safeguarding the alien data stores. We'll have to neutralize it if we intend to recover the data. Understood. Weapons hot. We've got our target. The fuck is this thing do? Alright, um, so we have we have now two really big issues. The first one is Jack was moved into a slightly not so well he is in high cover but easily flankable. Uh, that's our first problem. I can't move him. He sprinted there. Uh, so What's going to happen is, we're going to try and salvage this with aid protocol, but he might die. Like, I've already expected like about two people would die, so... With aid protocol, there's a good chance that, um, he'll still live. I, I'm surprised he just killed that guy afterwards. Alright, um, so, okay, so here's our next options. So we have... Kand already made his move too, which is not the best thing, because I would have actually... Yeah, no, actually, no, he made his move already. So, I think the codec can just wait for now. Um, I have a couple shots here. I think the guy on the high ground is who we want to shoot with the sniper. Uh, do we still have a grenade? We have a grenade. Uh, so, uh, at this point, we, we just essentially had the worst case scenario, and we want to just salvage this as much as we can. Um, so, it becomes difficult to make a shot over here. We also have a smoke grenade. What's a smoke grenade do? Defensive boost. So, honestly, I might give that to Witchell in just a second. But that means we're going to shoot at Can then. But at least when they flank, it won't be as big of an issue. It's a bit more difficult for them to flank as well. Alright, so we have a grenade here. Where's Kyle? Okay, so Kyle's going to use his grenade. Zan is going to shoot someone, I think. He's already used his defense drone, so he, he can only get basically a shot off over here. And, uh, I'm gonna try and shoot this guy. I think Zan has the guaranteed damage weapon at, at the very least. Okay, so we got guaranteed damage off, but not, not much else with regards to that. Uh, alright. We can still take out somebody basically guaranteed. And we may actually take out the guy in front of us with a grenade since things didn't work out there. Actually, we have kill zone. Actually, shit, I'm gonna use this thing. 
I just I, I totally forgot about this. Alright, we got Kyle and then we got Big Dong Adam. Alright, so Kyle will toss a smoke grenade after he goes into high cover because there's no reason for him not to be in high cover. This might be a little bit too far back though. Uh, oh, how far is his throwing range? Uh, he's right up at the range, actually. Is there high cover I can make him go to right now? No. So now I have another tough choice. Do I want to move him into high cover where he's more protected, but fl uh, but uh, I cannot defend Adam here, or uh, sorry, Jack here, or do I want to move him to high cover? And the answer is I'm going to move him to high cover. And I'm going to throw a smoke grenade, I think, at uh, uh, Canned here, because Canned is also out. vulnerable. Alright, so Adam, in his infinite wisdom, I think will move back to high cover, except there is none for him to move back to. So, although I don't want to bring him really to low cover, uh, my second best option is to move him far farther back so people can't shoot him as much. And that is probably what I'm going to do, because we're kind of flanked from all angles, oh, yeah, we don't yeah. have a lot of options here. So, with that, I'm either going to kill this guy or to kill this guy. And the answer is going to be to kill this guy. So, it's about lessening the damage right now. And hopefully the kill zone thing will get a couple people. Because the guy at the top is also within the range of kill zone. So, I, I don't know how amazing this is going to be, but let's just pretend it's really going to work out now. Alright, that guy took burning damage. Actually, that guy would have been dead, I think, because he took one damage. So, smoke grenade. It, it was it was lucky, but I think that essentially makes it into full cover. Like, it was just a bad spot, because I was essentially... Um, there we go. Here's our first shot. That's pretty good, actually. Holy fuck, he's almost dead. Alright, he's bleeding out. I mean, that's not terrible. I can save him still. Good job, Egg Protocol. As I said, worst case scenario, because I was running behind him. I knew what I was doing. It was a risk. Oh, I really want to use a Skulljack. Look <laughs> at through through the wall shot. So I'm not entirely sure what's actually triggering this. What the hell did that guy just do? Uh, that guy's back to life. Reanimated. Yeah, I have all these kill zone sh opportunities, but what is it triggering on? Is it triggering on their their action or what? All right, that that shit is insane. I just killed that asshole. Teleport. Oh, this person can teleport. Existing simultaneously across multiple dimensions. Uh, all right. This is an enemy I'm not really familiar with, so. Get back to the crisp. Oh, okay, so weapon disabled. I got a bunch of gas grenade. I think at this fucker. Who do we have? Uh, who who else do we have? Bye, zombie. Some dude up there. Is that guy still... Oh, by the way, this thing has, means debuff. So he's still burning. I don't know what the debuff is, though. Oh, there you go. You hold over it. I don't know how much time he has uh, burning, though, but apparently he didn't. wasn't guaranteed to have it for that amount of time. All right, so... Uh, okay. Here's what we're going to do now. We're going to try and take this asshole out. Because he's actually causing us a problem. We're gonna try it with can first. Okay, so uh, here's the plan now. We we know all our enemies are facing this direction. Okay, so moving over here. Oh, well, not all of them. There's one guy in the back. Okay, so we're moving him here, even though it's a flank, because I'm gonna use the frag grenade to blow up this guy's cover, and hopefully we'll just take him out all in one shot, all in one go, essentially. Apparently that's not a destroyable piece of cover. Which may have fucked up my plans here. 
Okay, and now he cloned himself. I have never seen anything like this. The Codex is projecting multiple copies of itself into our dimension. Uh, here's the thing. Can I just reload and then overwatch? Or, uh, I don't have to overwatch necessarily, but I can... Alright, well, it's a 50% chance. This is an enemy I just... I don't know how to kill, so... Alright, is he dead now? Uno menos. Uno menos, apparently. Alright, I, all, all I can really do is reload. Uh... I think firing my pistol won't do much here. Even though Kyle Katarn is supposed to be the pistol one. I, I think that guy's gonna die next turn, so... Uh, Witchell can still wait one more turn. Alright, who else do we have? Do we have a gas grenade? No, because I used that guy already. Alright, it's Muton I want to deal with, but... I don't think I can. Actually, wait, I maybe can. No, this is a giant solid block in between here. It honestly might be the most helpful just to uh, overwatch everybody, but I think in this case I'm going to actually take out the size zombie. Kyle doesn't have any pistol specialization yet, so he can just shoot stuff regularly. Alright, I'm, I'm running on the assumption that the guy at the top is dead next turn because he's burning. This guy got just pistol overwatch. Alright, so overwatch. Overwatch. Alright. Yeah, he's dead. Just like I thought. Alright, so this guy will have to do some kind of move. Or shoot at us. We got two overwatches. And it's single shot. Oh! And it does damage to me. Good shit. Okay. Knowing this now, I'm going to actually reload that because I just didn't know that was going to happen. Just standing in it. This changes my moves just slightly. I, I thought I just removed my damn my fucking ammo count, but this is one of those things. It's a blind run, guys. Like it's uh, I I don't I my first thought of it wasn't to get out of the big swirling vortex of death, but. Uh, I didn't, I didn't quite think that through. All right. Oh yeah, so we're back to over here. All right, so, new priorities. We have to get out this big swelling vortex of doom. Uh, all right, so same deal. I'm gonna do the same thing. I still think this is the best idea, which was to basically just go here, grenade that. And then I guess he splits. I probably could have gas grenaded that, to be honest. Probably would have been worth, worth more worthwhile than using a a gas. Uh, okay, he slightly changed his position, positioning. Anything like this? The codex is projecting multiple copies of itself into our dimension. All right, so my options are slightly a little bit more limited, just because I have to kind of go out here. And we're gonna pistol this asshole, I think. Uh, I, we'll pistol him if we have no other options, though. Let's see what other options we have. Okay, because Zan has to leave this thing now. Everybody has to leave the big sw Moving swirling vortex. The thing is, I don't even know if he's outside of it. Is there a debuff? No, there is no debuff. So... Here's what we're going to do. We're going to fucking pistol him. See what happens. It was a mess. Alright, it's not good. Kyle can move back here and then pistol, so that's what we're going to do. And is that a kill? No, it's one damage short. Oh. Oh, there's two of them now. Or there was to begin with, and I don't know what happened to the other one. I'm going to gas grenade them now. Because now they're together. And it doesn't look like they have poison, but then again, they're codexes, so... 
Alright, luckily he's over there now, actually, so I, I don't actually mind this quite as much. And this guy can... I don't think... Oh yeah, he can't get poisoned because he has a grenade. Oh, sorry, he has a med kit. He's immune. Alright, so he's dead just like before. And that glorious thing blows up now. Alright. Knowing what we know now, it's a little bit different. So, we have to move people into low cover because simply we don't have... There's not enough high cover to go around. Because we, we were kind of in a bad spot and that's just how sometimes it works. Nice try. <laughs> Can't resist the mind spin. You know, these shots look like they're hitting him. And then there's this asshole. Now the unfortunate thing is we will have to uh, reload our sniper rifle. And get teleport. Dude, he can just get flanks like that? That's ridiculous. Holy shit. Alright, so those guys are a big deal. I've realized now. Alright, so let's start with me. Okay, we, we still have time to get Witchel, so we're fine, don't worry. Also, he's not that important to me. Alright, we're gonna try and pistol the Codex. Alright, finally we dealt with him. Excellent work, Commander. It appears some physical remnant of the Codex was left behind when it dissipated. Hopefully, it will provide some insight into the aliens' ongoing plans. Estoy preparado. Okay, so I can stabilize Witchel from here already. 